So, what is trauma-based mind control and why is it important? And uh, this is what I need to talk about. I really wanted to be way more organized and maybe talk about just like a bigger picture and then narrow it down to my own personal experience. But like I said, I'm concerned that somebody's going to tell lies about me and try to get me um, kidnapped again. <laughs> and I was kidnapped in January 2014 um, with the help of sheriffs and firefighters and um, a whole array of people. And um, it was bad. You know, it was a serious, serious thing. They kind of made it out like it was supposed to be funny, but it was a serious thing. And it wasn't warranted. It wasn't based in any kind of factual, you know, reasoning. Uh, I wasn't, you know, I was m medically kidnapped is maybe a word you might use for it, whereas they tried to say I was a uh, suicidal or a danger to somebody else or to myself. Or None of that was true. Uh, what was happening was they were trying to stop me from again, advocating for my rights. So I'm advocating for my rights. But um, I need to actually be aware that there are going to be people out there that tell lies about me. Um, and one of those people, one of the most important people that tells lies about me is my mother. Um, why does she do it? I don't know. She, I know that she's very good at it. Um, I've tried to figure these things out, you know, I've confronted her, um, and she's just really good at it. And once I, once I recognize that this monarchy and this trauma-based mind control is something that's in my family and has been in my family for I don't know how many generations, I could be a little more understanding about it. I can kind of, kind of forgive her. Um, it doesn't mean I excuse the behavior, uh, and it doesn't mean that she, I feel safe around her. I don't think she's a safe person. Um, but it's been this horrible setup that I've been put into to where I've been blacklisted, uh, I've been traumatized, and some higher power has put her almost like a caretaker to me. Um, and she sees herself in that role, and other family members of mine see her in that role. And so it's, it's a way to tie me up, to restrict me, so that I can be controlled. Um, so it's a really elaborate scheme. And uh, it sounds unbelievable that this would happen, but it happens. And I know I'm not the only one it happens to, but I know that um, there's a huge interest in keeping me very controlled. Um, and it seems to have something to do with maybe some kind of uh, inheritance that I'm entitled to. I know that I've been, um, I know that I've been the victim of numerous crimes, um, and I know that my boyfriend's been the victim. He doesn't know, but I know that he's been the victim of numerous crimes and um, uh, theft, all types of thefts, uh, sex crimes, trafficking, all of this stuff. Um, there's supposed to be some sort of route out of this, um, but it's a rigged game. So. Uh, you know, so that that's why I've kind of like stopped trying to figure out what, you know, the game actually is and just gone, okay, you know what, I have rights, I'm an American, I have rights, and so I'm going to assert them as best as I possibly, because I do understand my rights, I really do. Um, anyways, um, if you were targeted since you were born, you're probably um, a multi-generational um, victim of, of this mind control, and so they there's a, a stack of control where there's a controlled person who's controlled by another person who's controlled by another person who's controlled by you know, that's what it appears to be um, and also it's a generational thing so this is essentially what they call grooming you know they talk about how you groom children so that maybe when they're adults they're kind of brainwashed already well this is a grooming that goes on over generations and I know in my family it's a seven generation cycle uh, and I have a feeling that if uh, you know, there's sort of like supposed to be an escape route in the seventh. This is what I've sort of discerned. I don't. I'm not 100% certain this is correct, but this is what I've discerned. In the seventh generation, there's, and I'm the seventh generation. There's supposed to be an escape route, um, but the game is rigged. So they're trying to kill me before I can get out of this. Um, and the reason I believe is because there's something that I am entitled to that other others want. A, a very powerful network. I believe that they are. Um, 
connected through Freemasonry, and they just want to steal everything from everyone. And um, uh, so I think that's basically what the, the scheme of it is. So, anyhow, um, what is trauma-based mind control? How do you know if you're a victim of trauma-based mind control? Well, first of all, if you've been targeted since you were a, a small child, there's a very good chance you're a victim of trauma-based mind control. If you have severe pain with no known origin, you can't figure out what's causing it, and you've had it for years and years and years, uh, you know, you might be a victim of trauma-based mind control. Um, if you've had certain experiences as a child, even if they seemed like they were accidental, for example, burning, being burnt, um, strange rashes, strange diseases, um, drowning, near drowning, um, or if your parents um, or you had trauma like right at birth, like my mom was a forceps baby to the point where you know her head was all bruised up, um, that's a sign that she was uh, a victim of trauma-based mind control. Um, so all of these things are things that are done to uh, trauma-based mind control victims. If you were molested, if you were, um, there's just so many things. It's just, it's just awful. And I don't know who invented this. I know that, you know, it seems like it's something that the Nazis were into, but I almost feel like it's older than that. Um, anyway, so that's, that's the story with my family. And that's why my mother lies about me. Um, I believe that she stands to, she made some deal before I was born that, um, somehow, she felt like she needed to do so that she wouldn't be exploited, but it allowed her to exploit me or to have me exploited or to profit from me being exploited. And it wasn't just her, it's lots of my family, if not my whole family. Um, and I believe that some members of my family were also involved in mind control from the medical standpoint. For example, possibly my father's mother, who was a nurse, you know, other members of my family who are involved in medicine, I think may be, or it may have been involved with mind control. And I'm not sure you can be in medicine and not at least be covering this up, um, because it seems to work through the medical industry a lot. Um, anyway, that's just like my quick cliff notes about trauma-based mind control. If you, you know, burns, near drownings, mutilations, uh, abuse, you know, spankings. I was spanked all the time. I was hurt in all kinds of ways as a child. And um, I always thought it was just bad luck or an accident. I thought my mom had this, um, you know, personality disorder. Well, I've started to realize that these personality disorders, like borderline personality disorder, are actually manufactured personality disorders for the most part um, from people who are victims of trauma-based mind control, because that's what this is designed to do. So you, you know, I noticed earlier on that there were connections between the Diagnostic Standards Manual, which came out almost exactly the same time as, you know, the CIA um, secret mind control programs. And I believe that the reason for that is um, because the medical industry has been involved from this um, at least since, you know, well, probably forever, probably forever. But um, you can kind of see as everything became standardized around 1950, 1953. You know, between, say, the end of World War II and the, you know, the mid-50s, um, I think a lot of these so-called personality disorders are actually manufactured personalities that come out of trauma-based mind control. Uh, it doesn't mean that everybody who's a, a victim of trauma-based mind control is going to have any kind of personality disorder, but, you know, it's, it's hard to be traumatized as much as you get traumatized and not have some sort of um, effect on your personality. So you might be quick to anger, you might have triggers... You know, I know that I have certain triggers. It doesn't make me dangerous or anything like that. But, you know, it's more like I'm Miss Mellow or whatever for a minute and then something might trigger me and so I just kind of snap at somebody, you know. And, um, you know, I hope that I, I, don't, I'm, I don't feel that I'm abusive ever. Um, but I make my opinion known. Um, so, you know, just little things like that. But, you know, I've been subjected to a tremendous amount of...